I'm documenting the build of my Rans S21 outbound plane. When I ordered my kit, I ordered the optional Rans pitot tube, which came with the pitot tube, some mounting hardware, and, and some tubing. I went ahead and did the installation of the Rans tube, and then as the build went along, I decided that I wanted a heated tube uh, as well as a little sturdier installation. So I purchased the Garmin heated pitot tube, and in addition to that, I needed to purchase the mounting bracket, uh, mounting screws. You would think for $350, Garmin would throw in four mounting screws, but they don't. Had to get some tube connectors, and I'm also going to use Molex electrical connectors. In this video, I'm going to show both installations. Uh, the RANS is pretty straightforward. The Garmin, uh, I'm going to show you one method out of several that I saw online, and this is the way that I did it. Um, I'm going to start with the RANS tube. Next, we're going to move on to the uh, pitot tube install installation. Uh, this is the RANS pitot tube that was an option uh, with the kit. Um, and then RANS did send some installation parts and pieces. First step on here is to run the tubing. It's, it's item number 29. We're going to run the tubing, which they give you. They recommend drilling a hole, a number 40 hole in the ribs. And then wire tie hanging the tube uh, from the wire ties in the ribs. And that will run from the root all the way up just before the truss. And what they do is they, they're recommending using a safety tie wire. You drill a little hole in the rib and you use a safety tire hanging system to hang the tube from the ribs all the way through. There is an inspection cover template for the doubler. And down in the left corner, they give you a, a, a little grid to determine if your printer prints one to one. I did check mine and it did not match up. So I took the uh, sheet and went to my copy machine and copied it at 106% and mine then came out to a one-to-one -one so that the grid matches the, the two-inch segment here. What I did is I cut out the template from after sizing it correctly and I clicked it to the five-inch uh, inspection cover. Um, then I clamped the three-inch doubler uh, onto the template again lining up the holes and lining up the um, the template I'll I'll transfer drill the smaller holes Clico the doubler to the five inch inspection cover and then finish drilling out the rest of the holes uh, the next step is I have clamped the five inch cover and the three inch doubler to a table I've left the Clicos in I've set up the pitot tube hardware they say to mount the bracket with the base pointing outboard. Install the nut screws. They're not clamped tight yet. This is just for, for sizing. Uh, I'm going to then rivet the doubler to the inspection hole. And then I will drill the um, hole for the angle clamp for the pitot tube. Following the pitot tube installation and rivet guide, I have attached and riveted the doubler. I've put the pitot tube through. They, they say seven inches, but to be adjusted after installation to the wings. Riveted the doubler, attached the coupling, riveted the, the angle bracket, and attached the pitot tube with uh, shear nuts. So I went ahead and I purchased a Garmin pitot tube. This is heated, angle of attack. It uh, was about $350, I believe. Uh, and then the mounting bracket uh, from Spruce, Aircraft Spruce. Uh, this is not the Garmin mounting bracket. There's another one. I think it's called the Getz mounting bracket. Those were tough to come by. Apparently, the guy can't get parts and isn't making them. Uh, so this is not the Dynon, but it's one just like it. It's a little cheaper than Dynon. Um, uh, and I'll get, I'm going to have to make a mounting bracket. That's where I'm up to next. It will get mounted in the same place. I also had to order some extra tubing because I need a, an angle of a tap tube as, as well as a ram air. And I'm going to have to make a bracket. So we're going to go through and read the directions. I've seen a couple videos on it. I think I've got it, but uh, we'll get started and, 
and get this mounted uh, to the left wing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount uh, the pitot mount onto a plate uh, bracket that I'm going to fabricate. The first thing I did is from my uh, 2034 aluminum uh, T4, T3, T4, got to make sure I've got that right. I'll, I'll subscript it. Uh, I cut a, a piece out of aluminum that's a little bit bigger than my mount. And then I bracketed it, bent it over to get an angle on it, and then drilled uh, four number 30 holes, which would be good for my 1 8 rivets. My concept here is that I'm going to mount it uh, right here. It's got to be within the first 25% of the wing. So we'll flush mount it here. I'll template cut uh, the pitot mast, which will go up underneath. We'll rivet this uh, bracket to the rib, and then also the skin will rivet that to the skin. And then we'll use some nut plates and some screws so they can be removed later uh, to mount this in from underneath. So my first step was to get my bracket made, I'll rivet it onto here, and then I'll trace out the holes to get the, the rivet holes from up top. I've got my, my pitot gauge wire. This is actually 14 gauge, a little bit heavier because the pitot gauge is a heater, so I need a little heavier wire. I did detach my pitot tube from that wire tie. I've got a second pitot tube I've got to run because I'm putting in the, uh, the Garmin pitot tube, which has AOA on it as a second tube where the, the Rand's pitot tube did not. So I've got to run that and I'm going to hang that a little differently. I actually 3D printed some grommet hangers. They may or may not come into place. Okay, uh, pitot tube. Interesting. I did some interesting things here. Um, I had to run the extra pitot tube because the Garmin's got an AOA angle of attack and a, um, a ram air for the uh, airspeed. Uh, the first rib, I actually used three different methods for running it through the ribs, which I was kind of experimenting, which is the name of the game. The first one is smaller holes with rubber grommets. I didn't like the way the rubber moved around, and over time, I think it might dry out. So then I went a 5 8 inch hole and put some plastic clip-in grommets and ran the tubes through that. I didn't like the 5 8 hole in the rib. And then on my third rib, uh, I actually fabricated a little plastic... A harness, I 3D printed it uh, and was wire tied it with a heavier wire tie. I think it's a 0 .40 wire tie, uh, which is kind of the way the original instructions told you to do it. But rather than just tape it through the wire tie, I think that 3D printed harness makes sense. Uh, with the pitot tube mount installation, I primed the bracket that I made. It's Clicoed right now, but I put uh, five rivets or five holes on this side. I'm going to cut the holes for the uh, pitot mast a little differently than what I've seen others do. Uh, I've seen others go in from underneath with a mirror and mark the holes from underneath. What I did is I put this template on that plate that I had riveted uh, to the rib. I marked where I want to have the rivets for the skin to the template. And then these are the screws for the... Um, uh, nut screws that'll go in. Then I taped a piece of paper to this underneath it's taped and I marked the rib holes um, underneath by punching a hole in there and then I've clicoed this whole thing uh, to the skin. Now when I, I drill for my mast and my holes for the whole the whole contraption it's going to go through both the skin and the plate that I've got riveted on underneath and it should be an exact match and then I'll just rivet the skin to that plate and put the mast in and I'm gonna uh, I'll explain this in a minute I'm gonna uh, put the nut plates on the bottom for the screws I'll show that in a minute but this is how I'm gonna transfer drill all this the diagram uh, to the skin okay I think so far so good uh, it looks like a lot of Clicos and a Clico mess um, so what I've got is I've got the skin clicoed with this row. And then these are my bracket clicos here. One, two, three, three, coming across three. But this is the inspection cover ring. 
So I'm using, and the, my uh, plate came right up to this inspection cover, so I'm actually using the inspection cover rivet as a third one instead of here. It's up just a little bit, so it's not perfectly lined up on this back row, but I'm going to go with that. Now I'm drilling out my mast hole. I'm starting with a small hole, and then I'm going to increase the size of it using this guy. And then I'll use my grinder and grind it so it matches the hole. And in theory, we should be good with the skin and the, the um, holes and mast hole. I wanted to stop here and kind of do a quick update. Uh, I've drilled two holes. This is cutting the mast hole out, which is part of this uh, schematic or template, which is underneath the Dremel. I've cut out two holes using my pyramid bit. Probably has another name to it, but pyramid bit. Uh, then I'm using the Dremel to cut a line along the side and then I'll buff it out uh, with a file and a polishing wheel. Um, and hopefully that mask should fit right in there. That's going through the, both the skin and the plate underneath. That's uh, right now Clico to the rib because um, the mask has to come up through both layers. Uh, that took about two hours of cutting and grinding. But here's my mast. The template worked. I just kept working it. Uh, a little bit by little bit. I'm trying to do this with the camera's hard. And it comes up there pretty tight. It's a pretty tight fit all the way around. So that's that's going to work. I'm pleased with that. I just kept taking a little bit off at a time until I got it just so there was just barely clearance anywhere. So we're ha I'm happy with that. On to the next step. The next step is to drill out the four holes at the base of the mast which is going to take this nut screw from the top down it's going to go through the skin it's going to go through my bracket and then this nut plate will be mounted on the bottom of the mast uh, of which this machine screw will go down and lock into it um, which will make more sense maybe when I take it back apart so I am going to drill I've got to drill out these last two here uh, to a number 11 rather than number 30 for the rivets. These are actually big, bigger holes for the machine screws. The next step is I'm going to rivet these nut plates onto the mast bottom plate. Um, I've left the, ma uh, the Clecos out of this one so you can see uh, what is, what's happening here. And on the top side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a uh, flush rivet on this side because this has got to come up against that plate that I installed so I can't have a rounded rivet so I'm going to have to countersink these uh, and put flush rivets in to hold these nut plates on. I've got the uh, stainless steel flush rivets in and the nut plates are riveted on uh, to the base of this mast. I have put the machine screws in there so you can see how when it comes through here it's going to be screwed in so it'll be removable. All this will be riveted. The plate will be riveted on the skins and uh, the mass will be removable in case I need to replace the pedo for any reason. So those will be uh, nut screwed in and uh, held in place that way. So the next thing I've got to do is I've got to clean up the skin. I've got to get these stringers in for the bottom skin because I can't do any more until I've got the skin uh, riveted. So I'm going to work on the riveting of the skin and then we'll come back to the mast. Uh, after the bottom skin is on. My next step is going to be to bend the tubes um, and I'm probably going to bend them at a 45 degree angle back and rather than 90 I'm going to go 45 so that they in theory should be able to pull out of the mast if I need to pull the pedo tube out for replacement or repair and I also need to cut them off a little shorter so I'll start the bend just past the bottom and probably get it about a 45 degree and then cut it off any extra after that. Here's what I did on bending the pitot tube. Uh, this is my mast and I said I was going to bend it 45 degrees. Uh, I actually bent it first before I filmed it uh, in case it didn't work. Um, I found a jar with a good radius. I think more than three inches is what they asked. It's just a jar. I took the tube up one at a time. And as I pulled the tube, 
I moved the, the tube down the jar so the bend started here and then as I kept pulling I kept moving it up the jar as I continued to bend and it made a nice uh, nice rounded bend without any creases in it and then I did the same thing in the second one so I got my my 45 degree angle um, in talking to the Stein rep because there's no Garmin manual for this it's part of the thousand page uh, G3 manual so there's no separate manual for the Garmin Pedo so the the Stein rep said that the uh, you've got two blacks two whites he said for a 20 volt 24 volt system you would uh, hook them up separately but with a 12 volt you'll just pigtail them together for one the pedo tube mast is done finally uh, I did get these uh, small machine screws in found the side on them that's a bear to kind of measure that and find out where to where to drill those holes the uh, stainless screw size is a six number six by 32 thread by quarter inch stainless steel uh, you can either get a, a pan head with a Phillips or an Allen wrench I chose the Allen wrench a little more grip on turning them in um, and other than that, I've got the, the stainless steel uh, screws for holding, the nut plates on the back, the pitot tube. There's a lot of discussion about these connects. These are like shark bite connects. They just slip on and push on tight. Um, Stein says they use them. A couple of people said they've used them and have no problem with them. This saves having to flare the ends and an expensive flaring tool and the AN connections. Um, I've, the research seems to say they're pretty good. I uh, put a Molex uh, plug on the end for my heater, so I'll be able to remove it. But that's done, so I'll finish getting the skin on and get that mounted at the end. Okay, this is what the pitot mast looks like installed. I've put the rivets in around, so the skin is riveted to that bracket. I've put the uh, set screws in to the, to the mast plate, which go through the bracket. And all I have to do is insert the pitot tube in, connect it to my um, two, two pitot tubes, and the one, uh, the one plug where I put the Molex connector on. So that is the Garmin installation. There is quite a bit of difference between the cost and the installation process for these two tubes. But I hope I've given you something that you can use. I also apologize for the editing. This video was going long, so I went through it and just started chopping out sections of extra talk, and it did make it kind of choppy in the, in the presentation. But um, again, I hope it's something you can use. Thanks a lot for watching.